Hey, what's up guys? My name is Chano. Welcome back to my architecture series. Today, we're going to be talking all about events. Now, last time we talked about layers, layers and events go together. So make sure you check out that video. I'll have it linked up there. So what exactly are events and why do we need them inside our C++ application? Put simply, events are just a way for us to receive data. That's right, for us to receive data in a particular place in our code. Not for us to request the data by calling a function and then getting it, but for us to actually be notified to be pinged with some data, kind of like receiving a message. There are other terms associated with this as well, like messaging, subscribing, listeners. Ultimately, all of this comes together into something called an event system, which is exactly what we're gonna be talking about today, as well as looking at an implementation. So if you remember our simple program from last time, we have this switch button, which switches between two different layers, as well as this flame. I've now rewritten this to use event rather than polling for data in the update function. And we have another feature, which is moving this flame around by simply clicking somewhere within our window where we would actually like the flame. So let's take a look at a simple example of how we can use this event system. So fundamentally, as I touched on last time, every layer has this on event function. This is a virtual function that layers can override. So we have like this overlay layer, which is what displays that button across all of our layers because it's meant to be an overlay. So it's sort of sitting on top of the other layers. So here is our on event function that has been overridden. Now, if we take a look at the contents on the on event function, you'll see that all it contains is this event dispatcher, which takes in the event and then dispatches it to another function based on its type. So here it's dispatching it into the on mouse button press function, which is a private function that I've written over here. If we take a look at it, the first thing it does is make sure that the button is actually hovered because if it's not, then obviously we don't want any of the clicking behavior to happen. And then we do the exact same transitioning between layers that we used to do inside the on update function. And I've left that code here so that you can see what it used to look like. We had to do a lot of dancing around to make sure that the button was hovered and then only respond to it once because remember this update function is running every frame but if someone holds down the mouse button for more than one frame which is very likely we don't want to keep transitioning between layers back and forth so we need to make sure that we only do this once we only do this once until the user releases the mouse button and then presses it again that is now no longer necessary with an event system because this is an on mouse button pressed event so this doesn't happen if the mouse button is down or being held, it's only when it's initially clicked. We get one sort of message notification of that event happening each time it happens and that's it. This is not inside some kind of loop or something that we do every frame. You may have also noticed that this function returns a Boolean and in this case we're returning false if it's not hovered, otherwise we're actually returning true. So that is also a really important function of event systems and something that we'll talk about later in this video. Okay, so how are we moving this flame around? How does that work. Well, that is inside our app layer. And here we have a few more events. So you can see that we have an on mouse button pressed, mouse moved and on window closed event. We set up the event dispatcher the same way because we just want to call the appropriate function based on the event type. By the way, you don't really need to use this event dispatcher. We'll have a look in more detail at how it works in a minute, but you can ultimately just say if event get event type equals core event type mouse button pressed, for example, and then simply call that on mouse button pressed function with our parameter. You also need to make sure that you're casting this into the proper event type, as well as doing some housekeeping that the event dispatcher takes care of for you, which is why it's just simpler to use this event dispatcher system. Now, speaking of simple and effective systems, when it comes to learning, check out Brilliant, the sponsor of this video. Brilliant is an online learning platform with thousands of visual interactive lessons across math, programming, science, data, and AI. It's an amazing way to become a better thinker and problem solver. What makes Brilliant different is that everything is hands-on. It's super practical, which I keep saying is the best way to learn. You interact with the problems, you play with the concepts, which has proven to be six times more effective than just watching videos. And honestly, that's exactly how I learned to make game engines, by experimenting and seeing how things behave. Brilliant is probably my favorite way on the internet to learn math. Their math courses focus on the most useful, applicable math concepts, so you're not wasting your time. Everything from beginning algebra all the way to things like calculus. I also really like their programming course because they focus on teaching you how to think like a programmer. This is far more important than learning a specific language and honestly what you should be doing to learn programming in the first place. I also really like that their courses are organized into bite-sized lessons. Even if you've only got a spare minute, you can still keep learning. This is really important to help you build learning habits and if you don't happen to have a computer nearby, you can always use their mobile app. 
To learn for free on Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash the channel, link will be in the description below or use the QR code on screen. Brilliant has also given all of you 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliant. Huge thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. So back to the event dispatcher. As you can see, this just simply lets us dispatch the event based on its type into a specific function that we've already written where the event is already in the right type and we can just go ahead and write our code. So if we press the mouse button over here, it just sets the flame position, doing some math to make sure that it's in the appropriate space for the shader. On mouse moved is not really that necessary because we could just poll for the mouse position here. But nevertheless, I just included it as an example. You can see it just sets this mouse position over here every time the mouse moves. And then on window close is also another example event just to show that we can actually run some code if we like, maybe save the state, do something like that when our window is actually closed. And if we have a look at what that looks like, when I hit the close button over here, you can see we get that window closed log message coming through. Now, if we wanted to see just all the events coming through, then we can do something like this event to string, we'll just log it. And then as you can see over here, when I move the mouse, we get those mouse moved events coming in. If I resize the window, we get window resize events. Clicking is also going going to trigger mouse button events. If I type some keys on the keyboard, we get a bunch of key events. These are just all the example events I've implemented in this specific application, but events can be anything. You could define them to be any sort of thing that happens inside your program that you want other places in your code to be notified about. So this definitely doesn't just have to relate to like the window and input. It could be literally anything. Now I did mention this whole returning true and false situation. This is another really powerful feature of the event system and layers. If you watched the last video in this series, which was about layers, then you would know that in this current application, we have two layers sort of on top of each other like this. The red layer is what has that sort of flame and then the green layer has that switch button. Now because from a side sort of perspective of visualization, the red layer is under the green layer in the stack. When an event occurs inside this green layer, such as for example, us clicking on this button, we can actually choose whether or not we want that event to propagate down to layers beneath it. And that's really powerful because in this example, clicking the mouse actually does two things. It both activates this button, but it also moves the flame. So how do we control what action we actually want to take place? Because if this was just a normal button in our UI, we probably wouldn't want clicking on it to actually move the flame because we're clicking on the button and the button sort of in front of the flame. As humans, that's the context that we're focusing on, the thing that's in front. So how do we implement that? And that's exactly what this whole true false scenario is. It allows us to mark events as handled by layers that are on top of other layers. And since we propagate events, we can sort of go through events and raise events in reverse order of the layer stack, meaning not from bottom to top, but from top to bottom, layers that render on top, layers that are further up in the layer stack, they'll get events first and they'll get to choose whether or not they want them to continue to propagate down the stack. So to demonstrate this, because currently we're transitioning from one layer to another, I'll just shut off us transitioning from that flame layer into the void layer. So now the switch button isn't going to do anything, but if I click around to move this flame and then I click on the switch button, I'm clicking on it, it's not actually moving the flame until I click slightly outside, as you can see here. So I can click on this, doing nothing, and then if I click around it, it's going to move the flame. The way this works in the code is that if we receive a mouse button pressed event, so if any mouse button has been pressed and we are actually hovering over the button, then we'll return true because that means that we want this event to handle that and not keep propagating down the layer stack. If the mouse button is not hovered, we won't obviously perform the button action and we'll just return false and that will keep this mouse button pressed event propagating down the layer stack to other layers. So hopefully this gives you a good look into the event system from a user perspective, meaning how can I use this in my layers? Why would I want to use this? Now let's take a look at the actual implementation. How does this work? How is it implemented? How can I take this and use it in my application? As always, all of this code will be on GitHub. I'll leave the link to the repository in the description below. So as I mentioned, every layer is gonna have this on event function that ultimately needs to get called. But how does that tie into actual events occurring in our application? And how do we actually raise these events? So all of the events that I've currently implemented are to do with the windows. So inside the window class, we just set glfw callbacks. We set a window user pointer so that we can actually access this class from within these lambdas since they have no reference to our current class. And then we simply create an event of the appropriate type and then raise the event. So first of all, event of the appropriate type. What is this event class? How does that work? So over here inside event.h, we have a whole bunch of different event types declared here just as an enum class. 
We have this macro, which just lets us implement specific event classes easier. We'll talk about that later. This is the actual event class. So you can see crucially, it has this handled Boolean and it is set to false by default. But if we set that to true, that stops the propagation from continuing. These are some functions that we mandate every event class to have. This should probably be a string view. And then here is the event dispatcher. So if we have a look at input events, for example, we have this key event base class because both the key press and key released events work around an actual key code. For this simple example, I've just left it as an int because that's what GLFW uses. Here's the key pressed event. It just adds this repeat Boolean because a key could be held down and therefore it's repeated. And then the key released event really doesn't add anything, but it's a different type. And that's obviously an important distinction because the key has been released rather than pressed. Here we have the mouse events. So mouse moved event, for example, will just take in whatever data is associated with that event. And that's basically it. You can see how this translates to all of the other different events for mouse buttons. Again, we have this base class because they function around a specific button and that extends into both pressed and released mouse button events. Now you may have noticed that every single event class over here has this macro with the specific type over here as well. And that just creates these three functions for us so that we don't have to keep copying and pasting them because we need this static type as well as a non-static type. Static type because it's actually a static function versus a virtual function. This is needed by the event dispatcher and then get name, which will return a stringified type that we pass in over here. So basically this type as a string. So instead of using C++'s type system with dynamic casting or anything like that, we do things here kind of the old school way by just managing our own type information. So we create an event dispatcher with a specific event, which could be any kind kind of event, we don't know yet. When we call dispatch with a given event type, you can see that it can get the static type from this T over here. This is just a simple example, but we should definitely use a concept or something to limit T to only be a subclass of the event class. But you can see here, we can call get event type, which is a virtual function on all events and compare that to the actual types get static type. And if they match, then whatever we passed in here is the same type as this event. If it's also not handled, we can go ahead and call the function and also cast the event into the right type here, which we of course have verified that it is. And then that result, which will be a Boolean, we assign back into this event. And this is obviously stored by reference. So that is how this whole propagation situation will work. Dispatch itself returns a bool if you want to know whether or not it was dispatched successfully. Now from the Windows perspective back over here, when we raise this event, how does that work? This raise event function will simply call the event callback that is provided by the specification, which basically means when we create this window, we have the ability to add an event callback because events aren't really handled by the window, they're handled by the application. Window is just capable of raising events. So we provide this event callback function. And so in application, when we create our window, which happens over here, you can see we specify this event callback to be the raise event function inside the application class, which is down here. And this is what notifies all of the layers of an event taking place. So you can see it will go through all of the layers inside our layer stack in reverse order using ranges in this example. And then it will simply call on event with that event and if the event has been handled by this specific layer, that is where we break and we don't propagate it further. So if I launch this as an example, we'll put a breakpoint over here. You can see that as I click over here, nothing is stopping those events from being propagated. But if I click on this switch button, that is where we actually break over here. And that is what stops that click event from getting to the layer beneath it, which is our flame layer. And that is pretty much it. As I mentioned, this code is on GitHub, so you can have a look at how the system works. If you have a look at the diff between the last commit, which was the layers video, and this one, then you'll clearly see the changes that have happened. Making new event types, because you are likely going to want your own custom events for your application, is as simple as just copying one of these existing events, like the mouse moved event, and just filling it in with whatever data you want, calling this macro over here, adding your type to here as well. And then you'll just be able to dispatch the event to a given function inside any layer. So that is the basics of the system, but you can do other pretty cool things with it. Let's take a look at Hazel as an example. So Hazel has a very similar event system to this one. You can see there are way more event types. And this is what I mean by events don't just have to be window or input related. You can see we can have like various app events, editor, exit, play mode, 
Uh, you could have that as an event, animation graph compiled, whatever you want. These are just ways to communicate an event taking place in your application to all of its layers. Event categories are also something you can have so that you can filter by specific categories. You can see there's an is in category function over here, for example. The idea of the event dispatcher stays the same. You can see over here inside editor layer as well, we are dispatching various events to functions, some of which we are handling here. So hopefully that gives you some ideas and ways to extend this event system as well. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to hit the like button and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. This is definitely also one of those systems that can grow in complexity depending on your needs. At the moment, for example, we are just raising events straight away immediately, but you might want to add them to some kind of event queue. You might want to buffer your events effectively. There are lots of different things you can do. This is software engineering. Anything is possible. If there are any specific questions you have or ideas for a follow-up video, let me know in the comment section below. You can also discuss this on the Architecture Series channel on my Discord server. Links will be in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time. Goodbye.